Hi, Cream Doll One. How are you? You're welcome. Queen Francis, good evening. You're welcome. Tem Love, you're welcome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you? How are you guys doing? How was your day? And um, thank God it's Friday. Okay. Nice to have you around. Duro Jaye, Olushola, Kusoko. Good evening. X I I I. Hello. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Nice to have you. Yusuf Sukurat. Ewalua one. Nice to have you guys around. Um, blessing glitz. Adun. Adun bon. Good evening. Esha kids. Good evening. How are you? Can Candas delights. You are welcome. Euro Euro Austin. You are all welcome. Good evening, everyone. Nice to have you guys around. Um, all right. Uh, Chichi Wagu, you are welcome. Nice to have you guys around. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, thank you, Yusuf. Super, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. I see you too. Queen Francis, I see you too. Nice to have everyone. Um, all right, I, I think we can start. Uh, people can join us later. Cutie Nando, you are welcome. Good evening. All right, so um, okay, let me let me put let me put the topic before we start. Oh, things things you do wrong that make getting pregnant difficult. All right. Um, let me pin it. How do I pin this thing now? I'm trying to pin it though. It seems this thing is not pinning. Um, how do you pin this thing up? Um, I think I, I should be able to pin it. Now. All right, pin comments. All right, so Ola Jumoke, you're welcome. So um, so we, we we should start so that we can round off on time. So I'm, I'm Dr. Shea Delecon. I'm a consultant gynecologist. Can you people hear me before I start? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, it's pinned. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me clearly before I start. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know. Let someone tell me that you can hear me. Um, I'm waiting. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm Dr. Shea Adelekon, also known as Dr. Shea. And um, I'm a gynecologist. I'm a consultant gynecologist and a fertility expert. And um, I've been practicing in this field for, for, for more than 12 years now. All right, thank you, loud and clear. All right, so I've been practicing for more than 12 years now, and I've had experience of dealing with couples trying to conceive. I've had experience of taking care of pregnant women that conceived, and I've helped them from couples from conception through pregnancy to delivery. And during those period, what I found out was that a lot of problems that women had or have a lot of problems that couples trying to conceive have is that they don't have the right knowledge. They don't have the right information. And when you don't have the right information, there are a lot of things that will happen. There are a lot of things that will happen that um, 
um, you just find that you are doing something and it's not working. And it's not just because it's not working, it's because you are not doing the thing right or you are doing something wrong somehow. So um, that was when I started um, Ask Dr. Shea online to give information to people and to help people um, through online consultations, through giving information to people. And I've been doing that now since 2018. And um, I'm sure I've helped a lot of people from conception to pregnancy. And so um, over my years of, um, over the years I've been working, there are some things I've found out that couples do. There are some things I, I've seen couples do that are wrong. There are some things they do that are not right. And then um, that is why a lot of them are not conceiving, a lot of them are not getting pregnant or is making is getting difficult to get pregnant. And then um, that's why I decided that okay, I think there is a risk, there's a need for me to come and give a talk on what couples are doing wrong. I mean, what you do wrong or what you are not doing right, um, that is making getting pregnant difficult. And um even online today, I've seen the same thing. Um, physical, during my clinic in the hospital, I see the same thing. And I have to try and lecture people over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to use this opportunity to talk to people again today. And um, we're going to talk about a few things, a few things that people do wrong that is making it impossible or making it difficult to get pregnant. So um, let's start. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, and that's the most important thing, is sexual intercourse. Um, why I say sexual intercourse is that a lot of couples, they are not having sex right. Either they are not having sex right, they, in terms of the number of times they are having sexual intercourse, or the wrong timing. You will have, I've had couples that have asked, okay, how many times do you have sex in a week? It's a week game. Uh, maybe a month, they have sex about two or three times a month. Or uh, those people that are even having sex regularly, they have sex uh, maybe twice or thrice a week. And then uh, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they say that they're having sexual intercourse regularly. But one thing about getting pregnant is that timing is of essence. Timing is very important. If you don't have sex at the right time, you cannot get pregnant. Um, if you have 10 people or 100 people and you find people that got pregnant by chance, maybe they're about 10% out of the 100. That means 10 people will get pregnant by chance, um, while the other people will not get pregnant by chance. They have to work towards getting pregnant. And that is how it is. Um, if, you have, if you are not having sexual intercourse as you should, then there is no, there is the likelihood that you get pregnant is going to be delayed. Now, if you let's look at um, why how you should have sexual intercourse. Now, when we define problem with when you say you, you, have, you have had problem with getting pregnant, you have you are dealing with infertility. Before you say that, you must have sexual intercourse at least three times a week. Three times a week for a period of a year, if you are less than thirty-five years, or six months if you are thirty-five years and above. So that means that you have to have sex three times a week, and not just any time of the week. It must be well-spaced. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday, and so on and so forth. That means you give, you have a day in between the time you have sexual intercourse. And why is it like that? One, the, the egg, once it is released, can last only for 24 hours, while the sperm can stay for 72 hours. So if you have sex every other day, that means every three, three days or every two, two days. That means that there will always be sperms in the reproductive tract waiting for the egg. So there won't be any reason for you to miss out the ovulation. There won't be any reason for you to miss out the timing of the egg. So, but if you have sex on Monday and the next time you're having sex is on Saturday and you probably you release egg on Thursday, that means you have wasted that egg, that cycle. Because you are not having sex rightly. You are not having sex at the right time. You are having sex, but not at the right time. And that is one of the most... In fact, that is the baseline of getting pregnant. 
sexual intercourse is the baseline of getting pregnant. I understand that because of the situation of or economic situations, um, some people are working in different states, or like people in Lagos, you are working on mainland. Some another, I mean, the other spouse is working on the highland, so you may not have time to see. By the time in the morning you are already out of the house as early as 4 30, 5 a.m. You don't come back home until 9 30. So there is even no time to have sexual intercourse. However, there are things you can do if there is something like that. There are things you can do to try and 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 um, make time around. I mean to make time for, I mean to have the right time to have sexual intercourse. And that is what we call fertile period. And you will be surprised that a lot of Couples don't even know anything about fertile period. Now we have a lot of applications on brand that will tell you that would that would that would tell you when you should have sex. That okay, between these days you should have sexual intercourse. You are going to get pregnant, and a lot of people don't even know how to go about it. So I'm trying. I'm going to tell you how to go about your. I mean, to have sex during the fertile period because it may not be easy to have sex three times a week. Let's face the reality. It's not everybody that can have sex three times a week, but if you can face this fertile period and you are consistent about it, the likelihood of getting pregnant will be higher. So how do you calculate your fertile period? I mean, one, you must know your cycle. And cycle is from the beginning of, from the first day that you are seeing your menses till the day before you see the next menses. So the normal cycle ranges between 21 to 35 days. So once you have anything within this way, 21 days to 35 days, you have a normal cycle. So you should know which one you have. And for you to know, that means you must mark every first day of your menses, you must mark it on the calendar. And by the time you have three day, three months or three cycles, you count from the first day of the menses to the, to the day before the next menses. That will give you what your cycle is. So let's say that you have a constant cycle let's say constant number of days in your all your cycles you have 20 days or you have 30 days or you are always 24 days or 21 days what you do is that you subtract 14 from the number of days so let's say you have 20 days cycle subtract 14 from it that's 14 days that means the likely time that you will release your egg is around the 14th day of your cycle if you are 20 days cycle so what do you do from that 14th day plus or minus four days? So that means from the 10th day, from the beginning of your cycle, the 10th day to the 18th day, that is when you will likely release egg. That is when the ovulation period will be. And that means that you must find time within those eight days, wherever you are staying, you must find time to meet. And how do you meet? You meet every other day. So you have sex on the 10th day, on the 12th day, on the 14th day, on the 16th day, and on the 18th day. And if you can do that constantly, in fact, I've had couples that they have been trying for two, three years, they have not been able to get pregnant. And I asked the question, and I found that they may not even have sex in a month. And because of, it's just because of the, the, the nature of their work, they are so busy, okay? And I explained, okay, this is how you should go about it. Just go through these eight days of your cycle, I calculated for them, and I asked them to go and do that for the next four to six months. And majority of them will come back getting pregnant. It's not because they have any problem, but because they have not been having sex rightly. And that is why it has been difficult getting pregnant. That is one of the wrong attitude of couples or wrong behavior of couples. So if you now have a cycle that is not constant, let's say today, this, this cycle is 20 days, this cycle, another cycle is 30 days, Another one is 26 days. How do you calculate your, your, your fertile period or your ovulation period? Um, it's not difficult. What you do, what I usually tell my clients is, okay, use, is the rule of 11 and 18. You know, if you add 7 to 11 to give you 18, if you subtract 7 from 18 to give you 11. So the longest of your period, let's say the longest of your period is 30 days. The longest of your period minus it from I mean remove 11 from it and let's say the shortest is 26 days minus 18 from it so 30 minus 11 that's 19 um 18 26 minus 18 that's 8 so that means your cycle your, your fertile period will be will be between the eighth day and the 19th day 
of your cycle. So if you start counting from the first day of your menses, you count till the ninth day, I mean till the eighth day, so that means you must start having sex from that eighth day. So eighth, tenth, twelfth, fourteenth, sixteenth, eighteenth. That one is longer because your cycle is not constant. It's not that it's not regular. Your cycle is regular. As long as you have between 21 to 35 days, you have a regular cycle. And it's always within that period. But it is not just constantly on a particular number of days. So just calculate, mine, remove 11 from the, from the longest of your cycle and 18 from the shortest. And then have sexual intercourse every alternate days. And once you can do this, just do it for the next um, for the next four to six months. If you can do that and do it constantly, the likelihood that you get pregnant will be high um, compared to people that are not having sexual intercourse like you. So that is one um, attitude I have found in, in couples that are trying to conceive. So the second attitude, um, I hope you are following me. If I continue, are you following me? Are you following? Let me just have a response so that I won't just be talking into the air like that. Are you following me? Are you are you follow, are you are you understanding what I'm saying? Let me have a response. Angelic, please, you are welcome. So can I have a response? Okay, Jennifer. All right, thank you. All right, so um, so the the, the, the another okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so another problem that I found with couples. Thank you, thank you. All right, Prim Dog, thank you. All right, all right. So, another problem that I've found with couple, um, another attitude, is not seeking help on time. Like I said, that if you have had sexual intercourse regularly, if you have done what I said, you have had regular sexual intercourse three times a week, regularly, you have followed it like that three times a week, and you have done that for one year, if you are less than 35 or six months, if you are 35 years and above, and you have not gotten pregnant, then you need to seek for help. You need to seek for help. So thank you, thank you. So you need to seek for help. If you don't seek for, if you have had, if you have constantly done that, that means something is wrong somewhere. Is either the, the woman is not menstruating, I mean, it's not ovulating well, the tubes are blocked, or the hormones are, are not balanced, or the sperm of the husband is not good. Something must be wrong somewhere. In 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 ninety to, I mean in in, in sorry in about ninety eight percent of cases, a woman within so if ten people get pregnant, I mean if ten people get married this year now, in the next six months you expect that about six of them will have gotten pregnant if they follow this process. Either have sex three times a week or have sex around their ovulation period, about six of them will get pregnant within six months. Now, by the by the time it's all getting up to a year, you expect about seven to eight of them to have gotten pregnant during the natural thing that I've discussed. Now, if by the second year, by the second year you expect about nine of them, so it's only one, that's ten percent that may not get pregnant at the end of the second year if they follow that. So by the time you have done this for one year, if you are 30, if you are less than 35 years or six months, if you are 35 years and above, and you have not gotten pregnant, then you need to seek for help. You should not continue to follow that process alone. I've had couples that they've, they, they've, they've been together for three, five years, and they have not been able to conceive, and they did not do anything about it. Some will tell me they are praying. Fine, it's good to pray. I'm a Christian, I, I, I pray, you know, but the, the, it's the Bible that says faith without work is dead. Um, you know, you have people praying, they say they are praying, they are seeing um, their, their pastor, it's fine. But um, the, the God, God will not come down and just help you without bringing people to you. It's just like the story of a man that was drowning. The man was drowning and he was shouting, God help me, God help me, God help me. God sent a boat. The boat came by. The man said, no, I'm waiting for God to help me. The boat left. A sheep came by. He said, I'm waiting for God to help me. The sheep left. Then, a helicopter came by. said, I'm waiting for God to help me. And the helicopter left. And the man drowned and died. 
I didn't want to go to heaven. I was angry that God, I asked you to help me. God said, I sent you a boat. I sent you a ship. And I sent you a helicopter. You didn't, you didn't go for any of them. So it's just, it's just stupid of anybody, sorry for the word, to continue to pray and not seek for help. And that is the problem I have with a lot of couples. I've, I've met couples that um, they have been trying to conceive for seven years, five years. And age is not even, age is, you are not, you are not the same, the same age you are seven years ago. It's not, it's no longer the age you will be seven years after. And your eggs, your, your, your ovaries, they are also aging as you are growing older. And by the time you are now ready to seek for help, maybe the ovaries are no longer even working again. Maybe there are problems that are not, you know, another, another problems will have been added to the problems. So if you have done that for one year or six months, you should seek, you should seek for help. If you are having irregular menses, what do I mean by irregular menses? Your menstrual cycle is outside 21 to 35 days. Like you are, you, are not, you are not menstruating in two months. You may not see your menses in two to three months. You should seek for it. You don't need to wait for six months. You don't need to wait for one year. If you are having heavy menstrual flow and you are trying to conceive and you are not getting, you are not getting pregnant, you should seek for help. You should try and find out why you are having this problem. And a lot of times, by the time you seek for help, you will know where the problem is so that you can face it outrightly. Another problem is people not seeking for help where they should seek for help. You are seeking for help, but you are not seeking at the right place. You know, you see people that will say they have gone to the, they have gone, they are, they are talking with family members. Family members said they should use Clomid. In fact, Clomid is the most bastardized drug ever that I've, that I've known in this management of infertility. Just use Clomid. Why are you using Clomid? Because they don't say I should use Clomid. They will go to help. They will go and take different kind of herbs. Herbs, if it's well refined, is okay. But a lot of herbs in this country are not refined. That's why one herb will treat headache, will treat malaria, will treat infertility, will treat diarrhea. One single herb will treat all sorts. And a lot of them also have impurities. They have toxic substances that are not removed. And this will affect kidney. It will affect the liver. So seeking for help at the right place is very important. You should see a, speci a specialist. If you are trying to conceive, see a specialist. There are a lot of specialists. You can go to good hospitals where you have consultants, um, gynecologists, or you seek for those that are actually into infertility management. You should seek for help at the right place and not just anywhere. And this is going to help you a lot so that it will reduce the number of times you are taking. Because I will meet people that they will tell me that they have used a lot of drugs and they went to chemist. Chemist gave them chlorine, give them this, give them that. Before you even start using drug, you need to know what the problem is. A lot of people just start using drug without knowing what the problem is. I found people that use chlorine and they got pregnant. Fine. Maybe their own problem was they were not ovulating. But there are some people that their problem is that the tubes are blocked and there is nothing you can do. Once your tube is blocked, that means you cannot get pregnant naturally. No amount of chlorine. If you use chlorine from now to eternity, you will not get pregnant. If the sperm of the man is bad, no amount of meat that you are going to use will solve the problem. So, not even about using drug. Before, if you go to anybody and the first thing the person says is that you start using drug, then that person does not know what he or she is doing. Because you must find out what the problem is first. So, if you are seeking for help, you must seek for help at the right place. You must go to somebody that knows what he or she is doing. Don't start using drug until you know what the problem is. Because by the time you start using drug, you use drug for that amount of time, and you have also wasted time. And as you are wasting time, there are some problems that if you know that the problem on time, you will sort it out. There are men that have problems. That if they know on time, they will have sorted it out. And that leads me to the next problem or next attitude that couples are having. And this one is about the men. You know, I've I will have I've, I've, I've had opportunities to treat a lot of women. In fact, it's, most of the time, it's the woman that will come, they will be the one that will come up for online consultation or come to meet me in the hospital. And then we will, we will come, okay, what has, how long have you been trying to conceive? We start talking, we, we examine, we do everything. Okay, let's do tests. We check 
for test, we'll look at what are you is your I mean are your hormones normal? Are you ovulating? Are your tubes fine? Is your womb fine? Then we ask them also do let your husband do sperm test, and the woman will come back with only her results. And we tell them, okay, what about your husband's sperm? He said the man said he's fine. Why? Well, how did you know that he's fine? I impregnated one girl three years ago. I impregnated one girl two years ago. How will impregnating a girl two or three years ago be what you are using as a, as a yardstick for now? Because within those period of time, you might have had sexually transmitted infections that was that might have destroyed your 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 your, your testes and all those things. You must have had other problems, medical conditions that might have add, added to the problem. So not doing tests, men especially, uh, they are the culprits. And I've I've seen a lot of men that have wasted the lives of a, 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 I mean many women. Because they refuse to do tests. And if you don't do tests, I cannot start treating you. I need to know what I'm treating. They will just say, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, you know, just treat me, doctor. My husband says he's fine. How can your husband tell me he's fine? Because I found that a lot of men are actually having, a, I mean, they're having spam problems. They're having spam conditions. And if you don't know what you are dealing with, then you cannot know what to do and the earlier you know it the better there are some men that if they know that they have problem earlier they will have even do spam do i mean they will have stored their spam in spam bank and later when they need it because some of these problems are progressive if they are not well taken care of by the time you are now ready then there won't be any spam again and science has gotten to a point that if we can get one or two spam from a man that man can still impregnate a woman. All we need to do is to extract the sperm and inject it into the head. Fine. And the woman will get pregnant. But if you are not even going for test as a man, we don't even know what your problem is. We don't know the problem of the woman. We have not done the test we should do. There is no way. If, if, if anybody start giving the woman drugs, start treating the woman alone, then... It's just a waste of time. I don't like to waste my time. I usually tell them, Madam, is it that you and your husband come and let me talk with him? Or there is really nothing I can do? If I do not know the problem with your husband, I cannot start treating him. Because some of these drugs are not even good for you to use for a long period of time. People that use Clomid, they just consume Clomid like they are consuming pure water. Clomid has its own effects. And there are ways you use it. There is a number of months that you are not supposed to use it. You are not supposed to use it beyond a number of a specific number of months when you are trying to conceive. So all these drugs are not the drugs that you just used. I mean, you just use anyhow. So it's very important for men also to come to a point of realizing that it takes two people to make babies. It takes the sperm, which must be good, must be adequate, must be moving forward must be active and must be alive. To impregnate a woman that is releasing egg regularly, that has nice and open tube that is functional, that the womb is also fine. These are basic things. And the hormones of the woman is fine. These are basic things that, that you need to do before you start trying to, I mean, before you know the treatment to receive. And another one now, I think that's the one, first one I said is sexual intercourse. Second one, seeking help on time. Third one, um, seeking help at the right place. Fourth, men coming for tests. Um, and the fifth one now, this one is making up your mind on your mode of treatment. I've had a lot of experience with this, you know. And this one has to do with fibroids. In fact, a lot of people. And this one has to do with fibroids. You, you, you see a woman that has a very big fibroid that has been trying to conceive and is not getting pregnant. You have done tests, you find out that, okay, maybe the tubes are blocked, which will be due to the fibroids. Or the woman is even conceiving, getting pregnant, but is losing the pregnancy. And you say, okay, madam, the best thing we can do for you is to remove the fibroid. Ah, no, I reject it in Jesus' name. Ah, no, I, 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 God did not tell me that I'm going to do surgery. 
My pastor said they must not operate me. It's all right. And the woman will go. Because when you are even trying to, if you are okay, let's if you if you want another option for um for fibroid for medical uh, medical option for fibroid, when you are using the drug, one you cannot get pregnant. Two, once you stop the drug, the fibroid starts growing back, and it can even grow times two of what it was before. So that is why when you are trying to conceive and you have problems like fibroids. If it is big enough, because it is not all fibroids that must be operated. I've had couples that will get pregnant even with fibroids. I will see this fibroid is not something you should worry about. Don't bother yourself. Just follow this thing that I've said, I mean, I told you to do, and you'll get pregnant. And some will get pregnant, some will not. Some will have to still remove the fibroid before they get pregnant. But at least you will have tried consistently to do everything to see if you can get pregnant first. Then others, it may be that. IVF is your own option. And before you get to IVF, they must, they must tell you the reason why you are going for IVF. If, is you, is, if your tubes are blocked, once your tubes are blocked, IVF is your option. And the earlier you, you, you make up your mind on that, the better for you. Because as you grow older, once you get to 40, using your eggs may not be, may not be feasible again. You know, because once you are 40 and above, using your eggs, the, the success rate drops. So if you are 30, you are 32, and they are telling you, okay, IVF is your option because your tubes are blocked, then the earlier you make up your mind, the better. If it is finance, try and look for the money. A lot of people, they will spend money on other things. They will spend money on herbs. They will spend money on this, spend money on that. And when you put all those money together, it will have even been enough to sort the problem. The IVF, IUI is not 100%, it's, it's about 30 to 50% in some cases. But that 30 to 50% may be your own 100%. There are a lot of couples that they did IVF or IUI once and they got pregnant. There are a lot of couples that they did, they used ovulation drugs once and they got pregnant. And I've had couples that they have done IVF five times and they have not gotten pregnant. It's not that it's hard and fast too, but if you're mode of treatment, you have, you have done tests, you have been reviewed, you have been told, okay, these are your options, and your option, you find out, okay, this is my option, please make up your mind on time before it is too late. Because as you are growing older as a woman, your eggs are growing older. It will get to a point that you will not, that those eggs will not be functional again. So by the time you are making up your mind at 42 or 45, that I'm ready now, and um, there's really nothing anybody can do again. They will now start talking about to use a donor egg. And a lot of people will fight against that. I don't want to, I want my egg and use my egg. But if you have done it earlier and you have done and you have done the things you are supposed to do, then it will be easy to do, I mean to, to use your egg and everything. So lastly, before I start looking at questions, is for to also go for follow-up. I've had couples that, after seeing me the first time, I tell them, okay, these are your options. These are the tests you should do. Go and do this test, go and do that test, go and do this thing. So let's see you again. Once the tests are, are ready, you will not see them again until two years after. Madam, what happened? Ah, I just got tired and left. And she now coming back two years later, you still have to do the test. There is something you can do. You have to start with the test. Because the last two years, you have not even gotten pregnant. That means something is wrong somewhere. So if you see, if you are seeing a fertility expert, you should always go for follow-up. I know it may not be easy. Um, you, get, you get tired. Even I too get tired at times because you just wonder why, what is going on? Why with all the things that you are doing, this woman is not getting pregnant? What is the problem? You know, but the truth about it is that the truth about it is that you may you may rest, you may seek for second opinion, but you should not get tired. Because if you get tired and you, you, you just give up, that means that by the time you are coming back, if you if you if you give up for two, three years, by the time you are coming back, you have added three years to your journey. And things that you should have done, you could have done three years ago, you I mean, you are not, you now start again and you now continue like that. All right, so, um, so 
let me just quickly recap. I've adequate regular sexual intercourse. I've talked about um, timing of sexual intercourse as also very important. Seek help on time. For those that are just joining us, you have to seek help on time. Seek help where, I mean, at the right place. Men, try as much as possible to try and go for tests. Not only your wife should go for tests. Then three, I mean, five, make up your mind on your option of treatment. When you have been told these are your options, don't just go away. Or don't, don't just say, it's not my portion. Sit down, consider it, think about it. If you need to look for money, look for money. Whatever you need to do, do it. And make sure you do the right thing. And do it as fast as possible. Then don't forget to always go for follow-up. Once you have started the process of getting pregnant, you shouldn't stop until you are pregnant. You can rest, you can seek for second opinion, but don't ever stop. All right, so let's, let me quickly see if I, okay, I think there are some questions here. Uh, Doc, I don't see slimy discharge during ovulation, but I always feel things. Um, yeah, I mean, um, seeing slimy discharge is not 100%. Uh, there, are, there are times that you may not see the discharge. But if you have, like you said, you have regular pains between your third, 13th and 14th day of your cycle, it may mean that you are ovulating. However, if you have done that consistently for one year, or I mean six months to one year, and you have not gotten pregnant, then you need to actually confirm if you are ovulating or not. You have to confirm if there are problems that you know or not. Sorry, I need to put on my glasses. How do I boost my ovulation organically? Well, um, one, if, I mean, your weight is important to determine how your ovulation will be. If you are on the fat side or if you are underweight, you will not ovulate regularly. So, if you are obese or you are overweight you need to work on your weight work on your weight if you are too if you are underweight you need to improve your weight most of the time by the time you work on your weight a lot of people at least 60 percent of people they will start ovulating regularly regular exercise take supplements there are supplements you can take that can also help to improve folic acid helps to improve um egg production, helps to improve sperm productions. Um, there are a lot of supplements, over-the-counter supplements that you can take that can help to improve um, ovulation. However, if you are, you, are, you are doing all these things and you are still not ovulating, then something must be wrong. It could be your hormones that are not, um, that are not fine. So you need to do something about it. You need to. That's why I said you must see a specialist. Can skincare products? Yes, there are some skincare products. Uh, there are some chemicals that have been found to be in some skincare products that can affect ovulation. You need to look at the, the, the skincare products and try and Google for each of them to know um, which one you are using that may be that may affect. Um, getting pregnant. There are some skincare products that have been seen that can affect um, ovulation. Doctor, I, have, I had IUCD removal in May this year, took in June and lost it, took in again August and also lost it. What could be wrong? We had sex to it. And yeah, if you are losing pregnancy, that means you are having recurrent miscarriages. I, the last month, I did, I did, the, and, I mean, I did an IG live on, on recurrent miscarriages. You need to you need to go and check it on my on my YouTube page. Um, ask Dr. She. You listen to the IG live. I posted it on the on the YouTube page. Ask Dr. She is is a, is a YouTube YouTube channel for you to look at what you are doing. Things that can be the cause of this recurring miscarriage. So, but the truth about it is that if you are having recurring miscarriage. You don't need to wait till you have a thought to go and see. Let somebody see you. See a doctor. Let I mean, you, you need to be reviewed to know what could be the reason why you're having the recurrent miscarriage. So it will be easy for, for you to be taken care of and sorted, sorted out. Can one use ovulation drugs with small fibroids? Yes, you can use ovulation drugs with small fibroids if your problem is ovulation. 
Like I said, you need to know what your problem is before you use ovulation drugs. You don't just use ovulation drugs without any reason. You must know why you are using ovulation drugs. Like I said, like I have said before, Clomid is the most bastardized drug that I have ever known among women trying to conceive. For those that need it and those that do not need it. So you don't need to use ovulation drugs without any reason. But you can use ovulation drugs with strong fiber. There's nothing that says you can't use it. Please, can you enlighten me more on heparin? What do you don't need to know on heparin? Heparin is an uh, anticoagulant, and they use in, it's used in some diseases that can affect infertility. I can't sit down and start talking about heparin. If you have problems, um, there are some conditions that can affect maybe systemic hematosis, you have immune problems, and some of them, you can actually use heparin. So um, I can't start talking about heparin now because this is not the major reason for this. But if you are using heparin, then why are you using heparin? What are you using it for? Is it advisable to do HSG again if it has been done before? Um, well, yes. I Sometimes if I have patients that have um, tuber, tuber blockage, um, sometimes I ask them to repeat it because sometimes... That HSG, HSG itself can be the reason why there is spasm of the tubes. Your, your, your tubes will just go into spasm. It just shrink, you know, constrict or shrinks together. And, you know, it looks as if you have tuber blockage. So you can do um, HSG again. But before you do that, well, there are some drugs that you have been given. Maybe you should talk to your doctor to give you some drugs to reduce. You can use um, boscopan. Before you use it, maybe maybe uh, in the morning before you go for the HSG to check again, the Boscopan can help to relax the muscles and see if it works. Um, please, Doc, what causes having repetitive blighted ovum? Um, you should go and check my YouTube page. I can't start talking about it. Um, a lot of things can cause it. It could be a medical problem. If you have hypertension that is not well taken care of, you have diabetes that is not well taken care of, you are using drugs um, that are not that are not supposed to be used in pregnancy, or you have some conditions. You have polycystic ovarian syndromes. Um, you are on the fat side. You can have if you are obese, you can have things like that. So you need to go and check the thing on it. So for consultation with you, will you need any medical report from my current hospital? Um, well, if you have your if you have your results, all I need is your result. I don't need your medical report. Just give me your all these results that you have done, all your draws, results of investigations. Um, I can check it for you. Um, appropriate weight. You, you use your BMI. Your BMI. Um, appropriate weight. I think about twenty five. Uh, is it twenty five? No, not twenty five. Uh, twenty twenty one to twenty four point nine. That is the appropriate BMI. You can you can Google you can use Google map I mean you can use Google to check your BMI your BMI will use your height and your weight so if you use your height and your weight it will calculate your BMI once you are between 25 and 25 29.9 you are overweight anything 30 and above you are obese the obese is now in levels so but once your once your once your BMI is between 21 is it 21? 20, 20 to 20 to 24.9. That's an, an average weight. Please, can I take folic acid during my period? You can take folic acid every time. Oh, does okra mixture in water? I don't know about, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I'm not a bad list. Uh, but you can take folic acid every time. Can one with endometriosis of bladder and PCOS with... No, you can't have endometriosis and PCOS now. God is not bad. Is it that I do? I, well, nothing is impossible anyway, but it's rare for you to have a combination of these. Can one with endometriosis of the bladder and PCOS with regular cycle be able to conceive when my tubes are patent? Yes, you can. But I don't. I, I, I don't know if you have both. Nothing is impossible anyway, but uh, you know. Anyway, you can. You can. Once your tubes are patent, once your tubes are fine, but the problem at times is. If you have been trying for a long period, for a long period, you have done everything, you may need to consider IVF as your option. Um, because the longer you the longer you delay, 
the longer um, I mean the more pro I mean the more difficult it gets to get pregnant. Um, so if IVF will help you, one IVF will give you opportunity to have many eggs that can be fertilized, and you can have them stored, and you can be transferring the embryo, which can be of help instead of um, uh, of wasting time. Sometimes it may take a while before you get pregnant with IVF too, because if you have endometriosis and PCOS, it can also affect conception rates, success rates of IVF too. But um, it's better than wasting time unnecessary. So if you have been trying for a long period and you are not conceived, even if you have if you have tubes that are patent, um, and you have done, you have used drugs, they have, they have tried ovulation drugs, you have tried other drugs to help you, and you are not getting pregnant, you should consider other options, other higher options. IUI, IVF can help. Is it advisable to go for another HSG if the tubes are patent? If the tubes are patent, why are you going for HSG? HSG is to find out if your tubes are patent or blocked. So if your tubes are opened, patent means that they are opened. If they are not patent, it means that they are blocked. So if your tubes are patent, there is no reason for you to go for HSG again. You don't need HSG again. You need to find out why you are not getting pregnant. And your problem is not you, if your tubes, except if there are other problems with your tubes. Because apart from the fact that tubes are not patent, are patent there, are, there are tubes that are patent but are not functional. They are not, they are not functioning well because there are, there are some things that are inside the tubes that are supposed to move the, the egg and the sperm to meet one another. There are some tubes that they're inside, they're all they are, they are bad. But they maybe they are they are they are the whole the inside the lumen are, are smaller, but they are still patent. Uh, except there are problems with that. But if not, does cervical tear in previous pregnancy have a negative effect or or those stitch? No. The only problem is if it was not taken care of very well. If it was well taken care of, then I, it doesn't have if it's not if it's not if it's not well taken care of, you can have cervical incompetence, and that means you, may, you might have been having recurrent miscarriages in second trimester. If you are not having that, no, it doesn't have any effect. How true is the claim that clomid results in multiple pregnancy? Yes, clomid can give multiple pregnancy, but the percentage is about ten percent. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think about ten to fifteen percent, or about five to ten percent of cases. There are people that have gotten multiple pregnancy through clomid, but like I said, don't just use clomid for use of clomid. You need to know, you need to have a reason why you are using clomid. Doc, please, does cervical tear in I've talked about it. I've talked about it. Is it risky to try to conceive at over 40? Um, it's not risky, especially if you are trying to conceive. If you if you don't have um, if you are not complete your family size, maybe you are, if you are just starting your family size. Is not risky. I mean, um, yeah, it's risky. Sorry. Um, the problem with um, conceiving after forty years is the risk of Down syndrome or having problems, um, genetic problems, because the eggs are not as they're not as as viable as young as you are when you are younger than forty. But use of folic acid regularly. Use folic acid every day, one tablet every day. It can also help to improve the status of the of the um, eggs, but the risk of um, Down syndrome is higher after 40 years. It's even higher after 45 years. Can someone be, yes, some with PCOS can conceive, but you need to see a specialist so that you can be well taken care of. You can conceive naturally, and you can conceive through other options, IUI, IVF. Doctor, please, for, for when trying for a baby boy, when can couple make love? I have a video. Though it's not free, you have to go and buy it. I think it's five thousand. It's on my website www.askdrshey.com. Um, it I discuss about what you need to do when you're trying to when you're trying to determine the sex of of your baby. You can check my bio. You can check my bio. You will see the link. You can go and check it. But the truth about it is that is by is is based on probability. But I, I discuss all the all the options. And the, the surest one, I discussed them. How much will it cost to save eggs? It depends on the it depends on the fat, fertility center. Um, 
you can you can you can send a message. We'll talk about it. I I'm, most of you pay yearly. You pay yearly. I've just been diagnosed with pelvic endometriosis, and only my left tube is patent. Is it possible for me to conceive? Because I've been placed. Yeah, it's possible for you to conceive. Zoladex will help to reduce the the endometriosis, and then you can now be taken care of. Um, it's possible. That is if the other tube is okay. It may be if it's patent and it's functional. Now, like I said, that it's, it's, there's a difference between um, open and functional. If it's functional, then you can get pregnant. But if it's not functional, I think you should consider IVF. How do I calculate my BMI? I have told you, go and use Google. Put these your these um, parameters that you put, put it. You, once you open Google, just write BMI calculation or BMI calculator. It will bring it out for you. Just impute, impute it there. It will show you. My husband and I have done several tests and we are cleared to be Okay, I did my method to remove five months. It tells you I'm 35 years. Does it mean that timing might be the problem? It's possible. Um, if everything is fine and you have not been having sexual intercourse as you should, like I've discussed, it could be. Uh, it could be. Uh, all right. Can a man with 25% sperm motility be able to impregnate? Um, normally, it should be 32%. Sperm motility should be 32%. Um, this kind of um, sperm motility, then what, what is the, um, the number also is also, also important. Um, this one, this man can, can, can benefit from IUI. Um, and there are some men, there are some women that, that, that we call, um, that, um, what is the English word now? That compensate, they are compensators um, for men with lower sperm motility. You have compensators that even if the, the motility of the man is lower, um, the woman, there is a, only God understand it, they just compensate for it. They are, they are fatter. They are very fatter. They compensate for it. But if you have 25%, I think you should consider IUI. IUI can work very well with this. But you may need to do about three, at least three to six cycles. That's the major issue. I'm experiencing menstrual irregularities and went for scan. I was told my uterus is blocked and the loop has to be inserted for me to free the flow. I don't understand. I don't understand what they mean by a loop. Has to be. Maybe they want to do um, a, an hysteroscopy to check and see if the if the tubes they want to check the tubes. I don't understand what you mean by a loop. Well, if you're menstrual, if you're having menstrual irregularities, it is not only HSC that you will do. You have to do other tests. You have to check your hormones. You have to check if you are ovulating. If you're having menstrual irregularities, you may not be ovulating. So you need to also look at that. Um, it's 32 days cycle. I've said if your cycle is between 21 to 35 days, it is normal. How much is that? You can send a DM to me. We can talk about that. Just send a DM to me. I was just say you want to know how much IUI is. Please, doctor, can one conceive with, with when ultrasound show a bulky uterus measuring 6.2 AP diameters classified in intramural posterior? This fibroid is small, but it depends, and they are intramural. They are not um, sub, submucous. You can get pregnant, but you need to look at other things apart from the fiber. What are the other things you have? How much is it for IVF? I have tried for a long time. My age is now. Please send the DM to me. We can talk about the price. Are you with bone egg and all spam? Is how much? Send the DM, please. Send it. Let's let's chat. You can send me a chat. I don't like discussing price of things here. Does I have a, have a success with that ones? Yes. The thing about IUI and IVF is that it's thirty to thirty five percent. I mean thirty five to fifty percent chance. Some people say it's 50-50 chance. But that 50% can be your own 100%. I've had couples that with one IVF, they had twins. I've had couples that with one IVF, they got pregnant. And I've had couples that did three IVFs. They did five IVFs, they didn't get pregnant. So, I mean, IUI, sorry, IUI. I've had couples with IUI. They did one IUI and they got pregnant. They have twins, you know. But uh, people that have done IUI, that they have done three and above. IUI is when you when you have you take a man's sperm, 
and you wash it. We call it washing to make it fine, to make it okay for us to. And you now take it instead of during sexual intercourse, sperm is deposited into the vagina. But there are some sperms that they cannot, the, the, the movement is slow and they cannot move fast. So, such sperm, we try and reduce the distance by taking them into the womb directly and dropping them inside the womb. And this will increase, it will reduce the number, the distance it will take them to cover to get to where the egg is. So that's the simple thing about IUI. So we do it for some, I've seen, I've done a post on it. Maybe one day I'll come and talk about it on a live program. I'd still back last year, June, and I've not been able to conceive afterwards. And I have five, what can I do? I cannot tell you that here. We have to talk. You can you can book for a consultation um, for us to talk about that. Um, all right, so um, I think um, by and like, so if you want to, if you want to have a consultation with me, you can have a consultation physically if you are in Lagos. Um, we have, I have places I, I consult um, with my patients in Lekki, Ikoni, um, Ikorodu, and Magudu. So if you are around those four places, you can send, um, you can send um, a chat to me. Uh, you can send a WhatsApp message to me, or you can send a DM to me on, on Instagram. Um, my my number is 08066, let me put it here, 08066275937, 62075937. So you can come for, you can, you, can, you can go for an online consultation. My consultation is not free, but you can go for an online, you can, if wherever you are, if you are not, I have a lot. If I, I have a lot of clients that I've never met, and it was through online consultation that they got pregnant. So, um, so you, you can send me a chat. You can send it, me a chat um, through through um, through Instagram, or you can send. I've sent the I've sent the the what do you call it the my my WhatsApp number. You can send me a WhatsApp. You can call my number. You can book for a consultation people either online or or um, a physical consultation and you can also um, check my youtube page ask dr shay if you there are some information you can also get from there um and by and large you can send just send me a dm you, whatever you want to know about price of consultation i don't like discussing price like this so by and large i think we can call it a day Thank you for all for coming. I hope you had a nice time. I hope I hope this Instagram life was nice. I hope you gained a lot. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right, thank you so much too. And thank you, thank you. Can you give me a feedback? I hope I hope you had. I hope you had. Uh, I I say I'm not an abalist. I will join all crawling in water boost ovulation. Take folic acid every day, either from your period or not. I don't know about all crawling water, please. I'm not about list, please. I've said that before. All right, cream doll one. Thank you too. All right, so till another time. Thank you for coming. Bye bye.